Hello fellow audio nerds, I'm Steph and this is Major High Five. This week I got a chance to get my hands on the Grado GW100 headphones. They're the world's first wireless Bluetooth open back headphones and so I was super excited to give them a listen. So let's go back in time, I'll share with you my first impressions and then I'll meet you right back here for my overall thoughts. Alright, here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to my place. So yeah, let's take a look and see what's inside the box here. All right, so we've got an owner's guide, an aux cable, three and a half millimeter, a micro USB charging cable, and of course the headphones. So right off the bat, looking at these headphones, um, so psyched on these. They're really, really quite light. Um, they kind of have a similar look to the Prestige series, except one big difference is just the materials made. The frame of this is plastic, um, the yokes are plastic, this piece here that connects the headband to the extender here is plastic, although the actual extender itself, this is metal. Um, the headband itself is really flexible. The headband phones are super, super light. Um, so this feels flexible. And actually, it seems like, from at least my memory, there's a little bit of extra padding on this, um, on this headband than usual, um, than the Prestige series. And, uh, it's coated in this sort of synthetic leather. So I guess, like, in some senses, there's sort of this this sense of it being like the material being a little bit cheaper however it's also super light um, which is a benefit if you're using these for Bluetooth that means you're probably walking around and you don't want something that's gonna weigh you down anyway there's a few buttons on the ear cup over here you've got the power on off which also is a play pause button and then volume up and down there's the little U uh, micro USB port for charging right here as well and then there's also the port for the for the cable. The actual design is really good looking. I like the all black sort of design with just like the simple, the simplicity of the of the look. And this sort of like takes the Prestige series and just the great old look in general and takes it from something that was just like totally and completely felt vintage to me and made it like seem a little bit more, a little bit more modern somehow. The ear pads, like the other Grado stuff, is just sort of this this foam. There's no coating on it at all, and because of that, you know, you might expect that these would get a little bit hot. Um, so if you are in a warm climate, these might not be the ones for you. But if not, then it's probably fine. Let's put them on here, and yeah, they're really, really comfy, um, simple. If anything else, and they're just, they're super, super light. Um, can't really stress that enough. No, no complaints other than the fact that you probably gotta take pretty good care of these just because of the plastic components. It feels like they could be a little bit um, fragile. Now, these headphones work with Bluetooth 4.2 and they also support Aptex. So those of you listening to high-res files on a high-res player, for example, that can support Aptex, um, you're in luck, you're gonna get the best, ah, you're gonna get the best resolution out of these headphones. The battery life is really nice too, it's 15 hours, and of course, just like most Bluetooth, you're gonna get a range of about 30 feet for the range. I'm super excited to take a listen to these, so to pair them with my phone, just pressing and holding uh, this power button, and going into my Bluetooth settings to connect the headphones. Okay, um, cool, there they are. Yeah, so I was just listening to the song Future Sound by Jurassic 5 and the low frequency sounded nice and big. Uh, the kick drum moved a lot of air. Uh, it, sort of had this like aesthetic sense of warmth it wasn't like super quick and punchy i would more so describe it as like there's a sense of softness to it that just sounds pleasant to the ear it sort of gave that song this sort of i don't know like a vintage sort of 
feel to it in a sense. Um, but I really did enjoy the low end. I think it's 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 definitely fun with the boosted energy there. The mid range is really fun. Has a lot of character. Uh, I was just listening to the song Roosevelt Room by Connor Oberst from the Mystic Valley Band, and the guitars sound awesome. They're like super big sounding and like just powerful and yet like a lot of the bite on them is actually sort of relaxed a little bit so there's sort of this combination of it uh, definitely not flat i'm curious how this sounds with things that want a flatter sound signature but for this like rock music it sounds really cool um it's got a good vibe to it Yeah, listening to some classical music, I mean, it definitely does something in terms of just, like, the excitement, like, the character to it kind of gives that unique character to the music. I think some folks won't like that if you're more into, like, neutral stuff, but there's definitely a character there. Yeah, and the high- I was just listening to the song Miles Runs the Voodoo Down. Uh, by Miles Davis, and the high frequencies are super fun with these. Again, it's not super like flat and even sounding, but there is like a little bit of a an emphasis there that changes the tonality in a way that kind of gives the headphones character. The high frequencies and the way it represent it came through in this song. You know, the symbols felt like they were had this like kind of added energy and air, and especially with the open back, just like sense of space. Um, the bell on the cymbal was a little bit emphasized, but I could still hear, you know, the differences between the different kinds of cymbals. Um, it still sounded, you know, detailed and, and had a good sense of sustain there. Also, the high end just really provided a great sense of texture, and when I, especially, you know, with the saxophone in this song, just came through, like, it was sort of, because of that emphasis in the high end, that texture, that gravelly kind of piece of the saxophone added to some of the just the overall kind of mood of the song I think and yet Miles's trumpet had this sort of sense of like warmth and the trumpet sort of sat more like high uh, than like it right in the mid-range where it usually is so it sort of sort of took a little bit of the like I don't want to say honkiness but it took some of the pr more present parts of that uh, of, the, of the frequency spectrum of that instrument and kind of ducked it down a little bit. The soundstage has a good sense of width and depth, as I guess you might guess with this open back set of cans, and honestly, like, there aren't, there aren't any other Bluetooth headphones, obviously, with, that are open back like this. Because of that, it just gave it a nicer sense of soundstage overall. I was listening to, um, the song When It Was Wrong by the California Honey Drops and the guitars, the organ, the drums all sounded like further off in space uh, and then the vocal felt a little bit closer and the, but really the bass guitar felt a lot closer kind of indicating this low mid bump in the frequency spectrum. That said, that song is a really mid-range heavy song so it sort of felt like maybe it was being shaped a little bit by just the overall sort of signature of these in the mid-range. But anyways, I'm excited to listen to these with more music and just spend a little bit more time with them, get to know the general sort of sound signature a little bit better. And uh, yeah, I'll spend some time with these and then I'll let you know my overall thoughts in about a week. All right, here you go. The low frequencies on these headphones are boosted, so kick drums and bass synths come through with a lot of power. And this power, this low end, has a sense of roundness to it and it also has a sense of warmth to it. So not only does it provide weightiness, thickness. It also provides a real sense of character to the headphones. The mid-range on these headphones is a lot of fun because the low mids are boosted and the middle part of the mid-range is really full. So electric guitars, uh, big kind of wide synths come through with a lot of energy and power. And so for certain genres, it just feels really, really like full and fun. That said, the lower part of the high mids is a little bit cut. And as a result, uh, lower kind of sounding vocals, like male vocals, for example, 
tends to sit a little bit lower in the mix and it blends in a little bit. Meanwhile, the higher part of the high mids actually is boosted a little bit. So you sort of get a little bit of clarity right there and a little bit of presence right there. And female vocals just tends to sit a little bit higher in the mix. The mid range has a lot of character with these. So if you're looking for something neutral, these won't be the ones for you. But if you want some headphones that have some character to them, kind of contribute a thickness to the low mids and the, and the middle mid range, then you might really like these. The high frequencies seem to have a boost somewhere between eight and 10K. And as a result, uh, sometimes vocals can sound a little bit sibilant depending on how they were mixed and just the overall sound of the vocal. That said, the highs definitely provide a sense of dimension and texture. So depending on the music, these work better or worse. Um, depending on the mix. Especially for a wireless pair of headphones, the soundstage on these is wonderful. The sense of depth and the sense of width is really well done because of the open back. You can really kind of feel the expansiveness go outward. And because of how thick the mid-range is and just how sort of like upfront it is, you can really hear reverbs and room mics well. And so mixes that utilize that sort of thing also kind of have the sense of dimensionality that not a lot of other wireless headphones do. There was also definitely a sense of detail although uh, in the height, although it wasn't super precise, but because of the kind of boosted highs and the big lows, uh, you'll definitely you know have a sense of directionality in the vertical domain. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And for another perspective on these headphones, be sure to check out the description box below because I will leave a link to my colleague's review of the same headphones. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.